Hello and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So I'm just heading out to do some watering and checking out things in the garden. We are nearing the end of August and nearing the end of the outdoor gardening season here for us on the Saskatchewan Prairies. If you've been following me on my channel, you'll know that I'm just a small scale gardener. I don't grow huge amounts of any type of vegetables. I'd like to try a lot of different things. So I thought it would be kind of fun just to walk around and show you some of the things that I've tried growing this year that I haven't done before. Let you know how it went. Give you my opinion on whether I will grow them again or whether I will scratch them off my list for next year. So let's take a walk around the garden. So let's head over here to my corn crop. So this is corn that I had grown in containers. I started this corn from seed indoors and got it to, you know, about three or four inches high, the little seedlings, and then I planted them up into these containers. So you can see the corn is finished for the year. I probably got only about a dozen cobs of corn out of all these plants. They were absolutely delicious, but um, basically only fed us for one meal. They were quite small. And so I'm thinking that maybe I planted too many of these corn plants in one container. Um, they might have produced better if I didn't have so many plants kind of fighting for nutrients in these small containers. But you know, it was, it was a good experiment. I have never grown corn successfully before in the ground or in containers. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do it again though. It was a lot of uh, time and effort for one meal of corn. <laughs> so that one's kind of on the table. Not quite sure if I'll grow corn again next year. So this year I tried five different types of squash and again I started them from seed a few weeks prior to moving them outside and I grew them all in containers. So the first one here I did was spaghetti squash and as you can see I have two and possibly a third one coming here. Spaghetti squash is something that I will always continue to grow. Uh, so this is a sweet dumpling which has not produced anything for me so far and I'm not expecting to get much. I, I see I have one squash coming here but I'm not sure if it's going to amount to anything before we get our first frost. So this is one that, you know, I tried it, probably won't grow it again. This was my sunburst, which also known as the patty pan squash. Um, one thing I didn't realize was how small these are. I thought they grew into a bigger melon or a bigger squash just from what I've seen on YouTube and, and pictures, but these whatever maybe it was just this particular kind that I grew where they only got to about you know that big they were not super huge I would say I only got maybe about five or six of these little patty pants whoops yeah they fall off right away so they're not going to get much bigger so as far as the sunburst I'm thinking probably will not grow them again this here is the Burgess squash. It took a long time for me to get any of the uh, female flowers to show up. So I was thinking I wasn't going to get any kind of fruit off of here. I do finally have one, two uh, squashes coming here. But again, not very big, but we'll see. They don't seem to be really growing in this past week. I've been watching them. They don't seem to be getting too big so I'm not sure how much bigger they will get before I harvest them and then I have my zucchini which of course is always going to be a staple in my garden I think zucchini squash and the spaghetti squash are my two favorite my only regrets are that I did not plant more plants so I think probably next year I will just go with spaghetti and zucchini those are two squashes I'm familiar with. They seem to always do well here. You've seen some of my previous videos. I always plant potatoes in containers and under straw on the ground. Potatoes will always be on my, my list to be growing in the garden. That is something that uh, if 
I can find somewhere to plant some potatoes, whether it's in a container or in the ground or you know under straw, I will be planting more potatoes. The majority of my potatoes this year I planted under straw here. So this is pea straw that I pack on the ground in the fall and then again, you know, in the spring when I plant the potatoes, I put some more straw on top. So these are starting to die off and look like, you know, they're ready to harvest. So in the next couple weeks, we will start digging these up and we should have enough to, you know, last us a month or two into the winter, hopefully. So again, potatoes are always on the list. Uh, the russets, the red Norland and uh, Yukon gold are probably the best ones that uh, grow good for me here on the prairies. So for the most part, I did container gardening this year. I had a whole row of lettuces and uh, including spinach and arugula. Those um, always do well for me in the spring. So these containers are ready to be cleaned out and uh, kind of cleaned up before the winter. And then beets and carrots were in these other containers. And these what I call are my uh, raised garden beds, kind of the redneck version, because I use tubs in here as well. Beans did not do well for me this year, and I'm not sure why, because I had good luck with them last year. We had a very hot, dry summer with, you know, the occasional rain shower or, or rainstorm that kind of saved things. It wasn't quite as dry as last year, but it was, it was fairly hot. And it's still hot here in the end of August. We still are getting up into the 30 degrees Celsius. So I don't know if that's, you know, played a factor in my garden this year. We're not used to having such long periods of heat. For some reason, cucumbers is not working well for me. My husband loves cucumbers, that's his favorite. And I've just been barely getting, you know, one or two every couple days. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've been used a lot of um, the self-pollinating, not self-pollinating, but the female only flowers um, varieties. So they don't need to be pollinated. Again, I don't know if it's the kinds I grew or if I just had too many in these tubs, but um, I need to look at some different methods for my cucumbers next year because we gotta have, we gotta have cucumbers. They're definitely always gonna be something I'll grow in my garden. So this is my tomato patch. I have, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven varieties of tomatoes this year. My favorite is, from the past, is sun gold cherries. This is my sun gold cherry plant and it has yet to uh, produce any or have any ripened tomatoes on it yet, which um, seems to me it's a little bit slow like I feel like I should be having a lot more ripe ready to eat tomatoes by this time these dwarf um, yellow tomatoes I grew indoors in my arrow garden and they are great they're a great indoor um, tomato to grow indoors so you'll be seeing that this winter in my my basement garden but I've been getting lots of uh, cherry tomatoes off of here they are really tasty, but they just, I just, from what I recall, the sun gold cherries are the best tasting ones in my mind. So I'm hoping that these are going to uh, ripen up here pretty soon. So some of the varieties that I grew this year that I may not grow in the future, this one is called a Palestinian tomato. I got these seeds in a seed exchange and I don't know, they are really ugly, deformed <laughs> looking tomatoes. Uh, so, so far I've gotten one off of here that was um, split and, you know, pretty deformed. I didn't even actually end up eating it. So, I don't know. And there's hardly any fruit coming on this plant at all. So, I will not plant those again. Beef steak and the roadster are determinate ones that I plant usually every year. And I will keep planting those. My roadster here got a bit of... Uh, blossom end rot happening with it so I think I need to just look at my um, soil here in my tubs make sure they're properly amended and set up in the spring for tomatoes this variety of tomato over here was called the ping pong cherry 
So the, the fruit on it is, you know, about the size of ping pong balls, a little bigger than a cherry and not as big as a beefsteak or anything. But these ones have been doing really well. I've been eating a lot of ripened ones off of here. They're really sweet. I really like them. So ping pong tomatoes are probably going to be on the list for next year. So before we get looking at my peppers and eggplants, I just wanted to show you my nasturtiums because I had them growing in the front of both of my garden beds here. They've been great and then all of a sudden they just started to die. And I'll show you a close up picture, but they are covered in these little black bugs that seem to have just eaten the leaves and killed the plant. So I usually collect the seeds off my nasturtium, so I'm hoping that I'm still gonna be able to to find some but not sure what kind of a bug uh, got these this year if anybody can identify them for me please uh, leave me a comment and let me know so I had lots of nice peppers coming here these are my Italian frying peppers this plant here has produced a whole bunch of really nice I'm letting them ripen on the vine as long as they can I have pulled off a few and done some cooking with them. These were a paprika pepper so I'm letting those ripen up and I will dry them and make some paprika powder and then I had some King of the North green peppers I think they were called. Um, I've harvested some already off of this one. So peppers you know they take a long time here in Saskatchewan if you don't have a long warm growing season they don't always do that well but peppers grow really well indoors so I will definitely be doing some peppers in my basement so keep watching for those videos coming coming in the fall and winter so the eggplant is something I've never grown and actually have never eaten I don't remember ever eating eggplant and so I'm I'm assuming these are ready to pick they don't seem as big as ones I see in the store but I think I should be harvesting them soon. If anybody wants to, if anybody's an expert on uh, eggplant, let me know. Should I be uh, pulling these off? Uh, I don't really know, even know what to cook with them. I've, you know, researched a few recipes. So if anybody has a, a recipe to share in the comments, that'd be great. They were kind of fun. I started them indoors and moved them out here, just like the peppers. Probably won't grow them again. I guess I should taste them first <laughs> before I decide but I don't see that I will grow eggplants again so over here is where I have asparagus growing wild so it comes up every year I hope that while it's gone to seed here that it's going to shoot up more plants in the spring I kind of want this whole area here to be asparagus and I was trying to incorporate strawberries in with the asparagus so I picked up these strawberries from a local greenhouse and I recommend if you like to you know grow strawberries of your own that uh, without having to go and buy them you know when they're more expensive in the pots I bought them at the bare root stage from the greenhouse I got in contact with them before they had potted them all up and they sold me a bundle of 25 bare root strawberries and then I was able to bring them home and plant them up myself and it's been a good summer of strawberries I've had to share my strawberries with chipmunks or gophers this year they've really gotten into them but I had them covered with bird netting and it seemed to help so I was able to to enjoy strawberries myself I will always have strawberries growing in my garden and they've been shooting out a lot of um, of these little suckers and I'm just letting them kind of attach into the ground and I should be cutting them off here now so that hopefully in the spring some of these will come back and I can have a good kind of patch of asparagus and strawberries going here. So the ground cherries were something that was really I found interesting. I've seen a lot of you know different videos of people growing ground cherries and making all sorts of interesting things out of them you know jams and jellies so i started a couple indoors um, i only ended up with one plant which i just kept in this pot out here and it has been producing 
uh, the ground cherries and we have just been eating them as we find them. They usually fall off when they're dried and ready. But the funnest part about this was bringing my grandson out here, who you've probably seen in videos if you've been watching my channel. He's uh, 18 months old. He loved to just come out here with me and pick them and then he gets to eat them. So I didn't really plan on making any jams or jellies or getting anything out of this long term but I found it was just a fun plant to grow and I think if you have you know grandchildren or little people that uh, might enjoy picking them and just kind of cracking them open and finding a little sweet berry in them is, is lots of fun so I'm going to keep it on my list. I think it's a good thing for a, for a grandma garden. The cucumelon that I grew is pretty much done. I see that I, I missed picking one here. So I just put out a video uh, last week on kind of the seed to harvest to pickles of the cucumelon. I get a lot of people asking me about cucumelons and I am by no means an expert, but I did try it. I grew them from seed indoors. I planted them out here. They grew all summer. I managed to get enough to make one jar of dill cucumelon pickles, which we've been enjoying. I don't think I'll grow this plant again, though. It was kind of just something I tried for fun, but I think as far as taking up space in my garden, it probably will get scratched off next year's list. But if you want to grow cucumelons, please check out my video. I'll leave the link to it below in the description. So over here beside my asparagus is where I planted my garlic in the fall and I was able to get not a bad harvest here of garlic about uh, three weeks ago. I'm just letting it all dry out. I can't remember what I grew. I think I had two different kinds of hardneck type garlic and again my only regret is that I didn't plant more. So this year I will definitely be planting more and hopefully get a bigger harvest of garlic for next year. So garlic is definitely still on the list for my garden. So if you've been part of my channel for the past year or two, you'll know that I do a lot of indoor growing here in uh, Zone 3 Canada. The uh, first frost usually comes early September and once that happens then it's you're done. There's no more no more outdoor gardening here on the prairie. So I have taken up indoor gardening and I use the hydroponic method, um, specifically Kratky. And I would love people to keep following me through the winter to see how easy it is to keep growing vegetables indoors all winter long, no matter where you live. And uh, so those videos are gonna be starting up. I'm ramping down the outdoor garden and getting plans and things set up for my indoor gardening so keep watching for those videos in the future. So I hope you enjoyed my garden tour here on the Saskatchewan prairies. It is near the end of August like I said and frost can come pretty much any day now. So thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun with me in the garden today. I would love to hear your comments below please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching.